Republicans won the 2024 election and are poised to retain their razor-thin majority in the House of Representatives, but MAGA Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't happy, and she's publicly reigniting her long-standing feud with Republican Speaker Mike Johnson, blaming him for the GOP's inability to expand their House majority and blaming him for the lack of productivity in the previous Congress. Looks like the MAGA civil war persists. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we got a couple of clips to look at here. You would think that the Republican Party would uniformly be pleased with the outcome of the 2024 election, you know, conversely to how we liberals and progressives feel. They won the presidency. They won the Senate. They're going to win the House of Representatives, and they have a sympathetic supermajority in the United States Supreme Court. They have total control of the United States government and are poised to inflict untold, unfathomable damage on the American people. It's like a movie event, like a, like a comic book movie where the Legion of Doom wins, and then they're still complaining. And that's what we see here. So here's Marjorie Taylor Greene once again picking a fight with Republican Speaker Mike Johnson. We should have a major majority, a super majority, but we don't. And we don't have that, um, I think, is based on the performance of this Congress. Um, this Congress has, has had a lot of failures in the eyes of our voters, in the eyes of the American people. The American people um, gave a mandate last Tuesday of the, the types of policies they want, the agenda that they want, and that's President Trump's policies that he laid out on the campaign. Is Speaker Johnson to blame for that? Yes, his leadership, um, unfortunately, uh, he passed, fully passed the Biden-Harris uh, agenda. Now, Johnson told me yesterday he's not concerned about the votes in the House in January. He thinks he'll ultimately get there. He believes Donald Trump will help him get there, but just shows you, again, a razor-thin House Republican majority like they had at the beginning of this Congress and throughout this Congress, which has given them fits all along, led to the ouster, of course, of Kevin McCarthy, the last Speaker of the House. So the question will be, will those detractors like Marjorie Taylor Greene fall in line or will they complicate the Republican agenda and getting a new Speaker in January? <laughs> the MAGA civil war persists, which as a liberal and progressive, I think it's amazing. I Please, for the love of God, continue to fight amongst yourselves because the less unified Republicans are, the less likely they are to damage, to maximally damage the American experiment. So this is good from a liberal and progressive perspective. But again, as a student of politics, I'm thinking to myself, why are you doing this? The reason that Mike Johnson had to acquiesce so much to President Biden and the Democrats is because he had a razor thin majority in one chamber of one branch of Congress, okay? So he had razor thin majority in the House and you guys were fighting him every step of the way. It meant that you weren't able to leverage your majority nearly as successfully as you might otherwise have done, which again, I am thankful for. But Democrats controlled the Senate, which meant that any far right initiative which made it through the House would die in the Senate. And President Biden is the president, so he could veto anything that somehow made it through the Senate. You all were trying to be the tail that wagged the dog and you weren't in a position to do so. But now the dog is full MAGA. This is a MAGA dog. You know, the tail, the legs, the head, the ears, it's all MAGA. So why pick this fight again? Now, we're get, we'll get into how unproductive the last iteration of Congress was. And again, Mike Johnson and Marjorie Taylor Greene are, and people like them, the entire Republican conference in the House of Representatives is entirely 100% to blame for that. The Democrats did their part. The Republicans did not because they're not good faith actors. But again, just imagining what this means. So again, January 3rd is when the new Congress is seated, basically when uh, all the people who won their election or re-elections, um, you know, take the oath of office and the new Congress forms. And that means that Republican Speaker Mike Johnson will need to be voted into that position once again. And in theory, in theory, it's possible that there would be some sort of opposition to him by Marjorie Taylor Greene and others who don't like Mike Johnson. But that would seem to not not only defy Trump, just create problems for the GOP in general, in order for Trump to do what he wants to do, he needs a smooth process in all chambers of Congress. So Marjorie Taylor Greene, I think by, you know, picking a fight with Mike Johnson and somehow trying to prevent him from becoming speaker, that would really make things awkward for Donald Trump. So I'm not sure she wants to go down that particular road because it would mean uh, complicating things for her cult leader. But again, Marge, if you're listening first, number one, please like and subscribe. Number two, I encourage you to be wildly chaotic and unproductive. Uh, that would be, again, in the best interest of the American people. But unfortunately, I think this is, I think we're going to see more uniformity from the Republicans now that Trump is back in power for precisely that reason. However, Marjorie Taylor Greene, 
does make some pretty good points about the lack of productivity in the previous Congress. It's the least productive iteration of Congress since the Great Depression um, and less productive than other iterations of Congress in divided government. Some people are like, well, that's just divided government for you. No, no, no. When Nancy Pelosi was the Democratic Speaker of the House and Donald Trump was president, they still got more done, even though they despised each other. But Mike Johnson and Marjorie Taylor Greene and this MAGA House conference is so incompetent that they couldn't even rise to that occasion. And Harry Enten from CNN breaks down the numbers in a really compelling way. So let's hear from him. How historically slim are we talking? How slim are we talking? Not as slim as I am, but let's run the numbers here. The GOP leads in just 222 House races. Of course, we haven't called all of those yet, but they lead in just 222. How small is that, Cape Baldwin? <laughs> how, small are, is how small is it? The GOP may have a record small House majority at the start of a Congress. I looked at all the House majorities at start of Congress is going back to when we had 50 states. Remember, Alaska and Hawaii were the last two that were added. 222, which is the amount they lead in right now, would tie for the lowest. But of course, we haven't called all those 222. I was looking at a few races in California where Republicans lead that might go the other way. If we get down to 221, that would be the lowest ever going back to since we had 50 states. And of course, it could drop even lower given that Donald Trump has decided to pluck a few folks from the House for his cabinet. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Again, as a reminder that many of Donald Trump's uh, cabinet and senior staff appointments so far have been incumbent House Republicans, Elise Stefanik, uh, Walls, Matt Gates. Uh, these are people who serve in the House of Representatives, and it's not like the Republicans enjoy a surplus from which they can draw. And actually, Mike Johnson has apparently gone on the record to beg Trump, like, hey, please stop poaching the talent, because even he is aware of the margins with which he is dealing. But again, we'll continue. Cabinet, Stefanik and Waltz, of course. So the bottom line is we are talking razor, razor, razor thin at this particular point, looking at what the House might look like in come January. Is it razor thin? It is razor thin. Is this a real word, Congresses? Sure. Why the heck I'm, not? I cover Congress Under forever. Dead I, have congresses. Never, I have never written I, Congresses I, 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 go th I go through the thesaurus looking for words that are infrequently used, and that before I bring them to the American people, Kate Baldwin. You're welcome. Back to the news. Um, wh what would this historically razor thin majority mean for the Republican agenda in the what the Republicans in the House want to do, which also means Donald Trump's agenda. Yeah. So, you know, we could get a pretty decent idea by looking at this past house, right? Because this past house had a very thin majority, very similar to the one that I think we're going to be looking at come this January. And guess what? How many bills did this GOP House pass? The fewest in 50 years, down 40 percent versus the 50 year average. So the bottom line is when you're working with such a thin majority, it's awfully difficult to get things passed just through a Republican House, because although the Republican conference is pretty united, there are still a few folks on either the center part or the far right who might be able to throw something come the other way when you have such a small majority to work with. Kate yeah, Baldwin. just look at last time. I mean, yeah. what? So, again, one of the least productive in American history that can't be overstated. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene's proposition, which is that's the reason why the American voters didn't reward them with a quote unquote supermajority. Um, I wish that were true. God, I hope that's true. But I don't think so. And the reason I don't think so is because the American people, and I can say this because I'm not a candidate for office, we're just not a rational electorate. We are just not. If we were a rational electorate, we would not have given the Oval Office back to Donald Trump. And we just did. We would not have given Republicans in the Senate majority control. We just did. My suspicion is these were just not winnable races due in large part to uh, candidates and perhaps the composition of the districts themselves. I wish it were the case that the American people were so appalled by incompetence that they voted accordingly, but that's just not true. It, we see that. Um, again, I don't expect a lot of chaos in this upcoming Congress compared to last time because, again, they have an incentive. Their cult leader has the levers of power, and in order for him to do what he wants to do, he's going to need the House of Representatives to be productive. So. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Mike Johnson both serve the same master, and the master will no longer be at Mar-a-Lago. He will be at the White House in Washington, D.C., and it's his agenda. It's not simply to thwart or stymie President Biden and the Democrats. It will be to enact the agenda of a vengeful and highly motivated Donald Trump. So I hope I'm wrong. I hope this is the beginning of four years of tumult for the Republican conference, particularly in the House which would have ripple effects for the Republican agenda overall, because you need both chambers of Congress to pass legislation. 
Um, but I don't expect that that's the case. In the meantime, though, we've got to look for silver linings and small victories where they appear. And so this is one of them. Fingers crossed. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.